Katie Smith from North Allerton in North Yorkshire is joining us. And this is a bit exciting. She's hoping for a UK first. Hello. Hello. <laughs> She's training a five-month-old miniature foal to become the country's first working guide horse. Yes, you heard right. So it's a guide horse for blind people. She's not trying to replace the vital work done by guide dogs in this country, but she says that for some people a horse is just more appropriate. Digby is the tiny horse who's being trained. Katie says she's got a man lined up to take him who's losing his eyesight and is terrified of dogs, so he's going to have a guide horse instead. Horses live a long time. They can be very calm animals. They've got a great memory, excellent vision. They can be trained. They're excellent companions to humans. Can they ever reach the stage where they are assistants, animals, for those who are visually impaired. Maybe you're somebody who thinks this is what I need and you'd welcome a guide horse into your life. You think it's a a great idea. But of course, the the notion of somebody being guided by a horse, let us say, round a supermarket, might take some getting used to. So we welcome you, Katie Smith. You run KL Pony Therapy and you're training up the UK's first guide horse. I am, yes. And uh, we'll we'll have a word in a moment, but first I want to speak to Mohammed Salim, who's listening in Blackburn. And you've been having problems with your eyes, Mohammed. Uh, Jeremy, it's, uh, it's a condition that you probably will be aware of, having uh, had it on your programme in the past. Uh, retinitis pigmentosa. Uh, it's really a very common cause of blindness among young people, yes. It is, yeah. Um, so... Sadly, I'm 23 now and at a very late stage into the condition, so I've lost the majority of my sight. But growing up, I have friends and I still do have friends who use guide dogs and I always saw the potential and, and you know benefits that a, a guide dog brings to those people. But I've got a really big phobia of dogs and I've tried to get over it because I, I knew the, the amazing benefit that a guide dog would bring, but sadly it's just a phobia that I can't. Uh, get over. Really? So even well, if the, the dog was well behaved, you'd still be frightened of an attack, would you? Or is it more, even more basic it, than that? It, it's just, it's just the concept of a of a dog. Really, I, I just, I've never been comfortable around them. Um, and I think the other aspect is you have to treat the the dog as a pet when it's not working. Uh, and for me, it's just just that phobia of interacting with it. Really. Um, mm. So, having, so this... now knowing now knowing that Katie is is training Digby up and there's a potential there to have a miniature horse as a service animal, uh, my dreams have essentially come true because I could potentially therefore no longer rely on a white cane and uh, see the benefits that other people do, but through a horse instead of a dog. And Mohammed, what is your daily routine like? Are you going into work most days? Uh, yes, yeah, so I, I currently go into to work and I have support that allows me to do that in terms of somebody guiding me around. Um, but then... With Digby, hopefully it'll remove that reliance on, you know, a human being to to do that job, and Digby can replace them. And your you would the, the horse would go on your commute, would, would he? Or I'm just trying to think. Would it, yeah, it, do you it, walk it, to work? Uh, no, I don't work to work. I uh, I, I take uh, a car at the minute. But with having Digby with me, I could then look at other alternatives of public transport. Or, or, you know, the means at the minute I'm restricted to driving, well, somebody driving me. Um, but Digby would open up those avenues of more independence yeah. um, because I'd have him taking me around. Yeah. And at work, can you see a place for a horse to to assist you? Uh, I certainly can. I think it would be um, a, a, a shock to some people in the office, uh, me bringing a horse in. But um, it, it's, it's the benefit that it brings. And uh, I'm sure people will want to the idea. Thank you very much, Mohammed, and all the best to you as as you grapple with that condition. I know what we do, as you say we've done RP before, and it's it's really it does strike very early for those who have it. So we appreciate your time. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Mohammed Salim, who's in Birmingham. Oh, sorry, Blackburn, and uh, he's he's well, Katie. He's excited by the idea of Digby, who is, I guess, the first of many. You hope? Yes, yes. Um, I'd like to be able to um, train the first guide horse to give people a choice um, of if they can't have the animal, a, a dog before because of health reasons and like Mohammed and also they might have had horses in the past and to keep that um, dream alive that they can still uh, work alongside a horse. And the horse would, would be with them pretty much all day I'm guessing and obviously a horse is, tends to be bigger than a dog so there'd be a few issues there. Yeah, I mean, the horses that, um, the miniature horses I've got are American miniatures. Uh, my smallest one's 26 inches high, and Digby's around about 
28 Okay, now. we're going to meet your horses in a moment, which is going to be very exciting. But I, I gather that one advantage over dogs is that they do live longer. They live longer. They can live up to 50 years. Well, that, uh, that's brilliant. And also they could even be trained to do household chores. They can do, be trained to do simple chores. Um, mine are therapy animals, so they go into um, care homes and nursing homes. And they, and, I gather they can do the washing up? Um I've got one, Monet, who's, uh, he's, he likes emptying the washing machine and getting his nose in the washing up bowl and taking the dishcloth out and sloshing it around. Yeah. Amazing. And would do that with his mouth, obviously, yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. And I, I heard they can, for example, if you wanted to get a, a slice of bread, they can get the bag of bread and they can get a single slice out. Uh, yes, uh, when, when they don't want to eat, eat the bread. But it, uh, Mona has actually got a slice of bread out and pushed it towards the toaster. Well, it is a, it's a wonderful idea, and I feel we've we've put off the moment for too long here. Who are we going to meet now? Can you you're tell me? You're going to meet Digby, who's um, rising five months, and uh, his mum, Glory. Um, the reason they're both together is because he hasn't been weaned yet, so he's got to go come along with his mum. OK, well, let's bring them in. So Digby and his mum, Glory. I'm just going to stand up at the desk here. And uh, producer Tim Johns is leading in. Is this Digby here? Glory. This is Glory. So this is the larger of the... So hello, Glory. And if Tim, if you lead Glory down to the other end of the studio... Hello, Digby. Oh, you're much smaller than I thought you were going to be. So you're... Yes, well, you're up to sort of above my knees, but not that much further up, certainly not waist height. And bringing them in is Sandra Good. And Sandra, you work with Katie, is that right? I do. I work with Katie as a volunteer. OK, well, shall we have a little chat with, with Digby here? And just tell me how old the horse is, Katie. He's rising five months. So amazing, isn't it? Five months ago, this horse here was inside his mum, and they're now about the same size. And yes. I'm just trying to give a sense of the size. Do you have any, do you your height of the yeah, horse's he back? Be, he should be fully grown now. Right. But he'll just fill out. Well, I think you could, certainly you could have a horse come into an office environment this size. Yes, definitely. I mean, he's, definitely. if I stand up, I'm standing up beside him, and he's up halfway up my thigh. Yeah. I'm quite tall, but is he OK? Oh, yes, yeah. Shall I give him a little scratch of his yeah, mane? Like, well, he likes his bottom scratched. He likes his bottom scratch, it's a bum, which... It's a man thing. Right, OK. Oh, um, I think I'm... Am I doing the right thing? You are. OK, he's has gone... <laughs> he's gone quite quiet. Yeah. Yes, you've got right. the touch. OK. I didn't mention that this morning. Have you got some <laughs> some carrots there? Yes. <laughs> if you'd like to hold that, and okay. if you'd like to give uh, Glory... Gloria! How are you? Come on. Come here. Okay. That's it. Oh, you're so cute. And you're only a little bit bigger than your son, aren't you? What do you think of our studio? You like it, don't you? Do you like it? Yeah. You like the carrot? Very nice. I love very this. This sound of her eating is such a relaxing sound, Katie, isn't it? Yes, it's very um, soporific, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's just the sound of nature. And, and he's been happy ever since I scratched his bottom as well, so we've got two <laughs> happy horses here. OK. So, um, Sandra, tell us a little bit about uh, Glory. Well, Glory's nine, and uh, she comes from Texas in America. So uh, Digby, I think, is her fourth foal, but obviously the first one for Katie. And when Digby's weaned, we're going to train Glory to be a therapy pony as well. OK. And Digby, how far down the line is Digby? Hello, Digby. How are you doing? I love your mane. You got, and I love so your little knows. strap here. How, how far down the line is Digby's training? He's um, learning his harness, and he's learning basic commands like uh, forward, no... Walk and um, stand still. And sit. And well, I wish. <laughs> Can he, um, he's, he's going for the carrot. Oh, he likes. So I can't. I... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, my hand was going in. Hang on. Right. Okay, I think I've got a problem here. Sorry. Can you do the carrot thing? I'll, Sorry, I'll do the carrot thing. Because I think I was going to lose a finger. <laughs> But he, so he's he's got some basic commands. He's, Has he? Will you be giving him some skills? Uh, yes, he'll be um, learning to go um, into Northallerton High um, High Street. Right down where, the High Street, and yes, how are the pavements there? Are they wide yeah. enough? The pavements are wide enough. We've got a brilliant place where we are at the moment. We live um, at Northallerton Equestrian Centre. Yeah, he's loving the carrot. Listen to this. 
I just love yeah. that sound. Where um, we've got a cafe there yeah. and um, we've got indoor schools and events, so he's um, got plenty of opportunity to get accustomed to all different, he, different right. things. Is he okay around traffic? Because that could really trouble a horse. Yes, he's good, he's good in traffic because we have like the horse boxes coming for events and cars and everything. So um, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be taking him uh, up to Nathalaton High Street. Both going for the carrot now, so mother and son. And uh, the mother's won, quite right too. Yeah. Um, and he's going to. Do you think that the horse feels satisfied doing this kind of work with um, with somebody who's blind? Do you think they'll? Oh, they're right. Don't worry. Don't worry about the headphones. That's fine. Oh, is that all right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What's um, this? Um, that's his lead rope. Okay. Um, uh, yes, you can't do give a horse a job that they don't like to do because they wouldn't do it, and we, I certainly wouldn't um, force it on them. Can you see any any difficulties with, let's say, going into the cinema? Um. No, I think as long as they're trained right and they have the basic uh, knowledge and um, we are very careful on how we train them, I think you can take them anywhere because and they you, trust. And you would, if, if you were a blind person with a, a horse, they would live in the house with you, wouldn't they? So you'd have to have... It's, it's a little bit more than you'd need for a dog. You'd need a whole room. Um, they could live in the house, but they can also live outside. So like a service animal, um, they are... Um, when they're in the house, that's their downtime. Okay. Um, when they've got, not got the harness on, that's their downtime. So it's just like a guide dog. Wonderful. Let's just have a... So, well, you've got an f- exciting life ahead of you, haven't you? Lovely, lovely horse here. And you, would, would, you, you, would you say pony or horse? horse. Yeah, yeah, it's these not are American a... American miniature okay. horse. Okay. I'm just... The scratching that he loves here. That's me scratching and he really likes that. Don't you? You really like that. These are, this is amazing and they've been so well behaved. And I, I can see how... This, it, this could work in a most beautiful way with somebody. Let me just, I tell you what, let's just, we'll get our act together here and, and get that, make sure the horses are okay. We don't want them stressed. They look pretty calm. And we're loving meeting your horses. Thank now, you. I'm sitting the other side of the desk and I'm missing the little scratch of the, of the hair and, and the mane and the tail. And I can hear, what can I hear now, actually? Uh, them both rummaging in the bucket. They for, started rummaging. Yes. Yeah, for apples and carrots and. If you if if somebody were were blind, um, what oh, is that's Digby pawing because he's getting excited. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let us know if he bolts. Yeah, no. <laughs> but would would that would that be a problem if you were if you're blind and you're sitting at home and you're ho- you suddenly hear the horses has eaten everything? Um. Well, hopefully, um, they probably. I'd well, you keep ha- them outside, I guess. Yes, how I do yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, they're really lively there. So let's just see. We've got Patrick Smith in Bromsgrove listening. You'll enjoy this, Katie, because, Patrick, you've got a miniature horse yourself. I certainly have got a miniature horse, yes. I've okay. got an English breed, though, not an American breed. OK, English breed. We've got a lot of... Just see what's happening here. The bucket's under, <laughs> under siege. You've got a bucket. What's it got in carrots? There's an apple in the bottom. There's an apple in the bottom. That's what's happening. So the, the horses are going for it. And, Patrick, you, you buy this idea, don't you? This idea that... I, it, I, think, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, I've got mine. My, my pony, Peanut, Kilcoma Pluto, is two years and one month old. Um, he's gone into learning disability schools, care homes. He's a bit of a celebrity in my hometown. Um, I've been stopped by the police and fire brigade quite often, so they can have photographs next to their vehicles with him. He's also the mascot for the local British Legion. Yep. Um, he's le- he actually, uh, as local church in John's Church, he led Palm Sunday this year, actually inside the church. He's house trained. And basically, I, I think this is a fantastic idea. I, I understand all of that, but having the horse as a guide dog for a blind person is, is a more even more intimate relationship than that, isn't it? Because they are together all the time. Yeah. And obviously the first thing one thinks of are, are there spaces that are going to be too small? But actually, looking at these horses now, I'm, I'm just thinking about the positives. And I guess that's, that's the place to start, really, isn't it? It is. And my partner has not been well recently, and the horse knows when he's not well. Um, he can sense. Um, he goes in lifts with my partner. He's been at the local train station in the lift from one side of the track to the other. Yeah. He's been in shops. He comes regularly to the pub with both of us. Yeah. Anywhere he can't go? Um... At the moment, we're not allowed, even though he's a therapy horse, to take him in the establishment to disturb food. Right. So a sandwich shop, for example. 
Um, well, no, he'll go into a shop like that, but not in restaurants where they're actually serving food for people to consume. I see. So it's got to be in a wrapper of some kind. Yeah. Um, all right, Patrick, thank you very much. I'm just going to... I want to head round the desk again because I think this is just its just too good a chance to miss because these two beautiful... What We just don't have enough animals in the studio. Can I just do one more feed, one more carrot, or have they have they had... All oh, the apples here, though. Shall I do that? Yeah, she loves the apples. Hey, Glory. Oh, look, I've, I've got a bit more confidence now with feeding. Because <laughs> yeah. you don't ever get your hand bitten, do you? Well, no, only if you stick your fingers in the mouth. Yeah, I've, I've got my hand out of the way, but... Absolutely. Yeah, Digby, come on. Um, don't go on a walk. Where are you going? Is it Steve Wright again? He's got... Hang on. He's on his... Should I open the door? He's, um, he's just moved over the studio here. Come here. He's possibly anticipating the next programme. OK. I think they're, I think they're OK. There's a little bit of stamping going on. Come on. Katie, what are we... Um, what do we think? Are they, they a little bit restless because of the no, space? No, no, no. Um, it's because Digby went away from Mum. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, mum, mum still thinks um, she's boss. Yeah. I tell you what, I'll play a trail. Anyone wants to comment on this? I, it's, it's absolutely magical to see this. 08000 288 291. Email vine at bbc.co.uk. And the only place we think they can't go would be an actual restaurant where somebody's bringing out plates of food, Katie. That's the only... That's it. That's the only place. But, but... even then, if, it's, if the, the horse is guiding somebody who's blind, there, there might be an exemption. Well, hopefully um, we'll be able to get the law changed or so they become service animals. And yeah. then when they ha- can come under the umbrella of a service animal, like the guide dogs, they'll be able to um, go where a guide dog can go. A horse could go on a bus, no problem. A bus, a plane, a taxi. Um, I spoke to a lady in America who had one um, and she had it for three years and she took it everywhere. On a plane? On a plane. Really? And it stood next to her on a... On a plane, okay. um, went on buses, um, and I. Th- no, there's no real limit. No. Right, no. dreaming big here. Yes. Thank you. Stay with us. We uh, anyone wants to call, do call. It's a magical moment. Katie, you'll be pleased to know. Carol Farr says, "Bless these horses. The thought of them eating everything." Um, d- yeah, don't eat the microphone. Uh, says says Mel. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Katie Smith, who runs KL Pony Therapy. And it's tra- training up. We are now with the UK's first ever guide horse for a blind person, hopefully. We spoke to Mohammed, who would really like to have Digby. Sandra Good works with Katie. And we mustn't forget to mention Glory, the mum, as well.